Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Lotro with me, Valfellian. So today we are carrying on with our questing inside Nankurinir, the Valley of Isengard. Uh, Valley of Saruman even, uh, which is where Isengard is. Um, so we still need to kill one more sentry. We need to collect the Rohirrim Helm, Spear and Shield, which belong to uh, this poor chap and his dead horse over here. Who we found at the, uh, the tail end of last episode. Um, so they're scattered around, so one is to the north of us, one's to the northeast, and one is east on the road. Um, but I can see there's a half orc sentry over here, so if we just murder him. And then we can uh, freely ride across and go get those other items. But um, hopefully by now you've all had a chance to, to hear about the news that, that was um, coming out of SSG this week, where they surprised everyone by announcing um, that they're going to do basically a, a progression server. Um, for the Lord of the Rings Online, so um, they're going to start a brand new server, and it seems to be one server, singular. Um, and uh, they're going to lock it to be level 50 as a level cap, <clears throat> which means you can only have all the content up to and including uh, you know, the likes of Angmar at level 50. So anything beyond level 50, um, which is, um, you know, like Moria. Isengard, Mirkwood, all that kind of stuff, you won't have access to initially. You will eventually. Okay, so this, this server's um, basically going to start with the Angmar cap, and it seems that every four months they'll do a big update to unlock more content, and it's unclear what sort of updates they're doing every four months. To me, it sounds like every four months they, they unlock the next expansion. Um, so it's going to bump up those expansions. Lotro's got six expansions, so with every four four months, it's basically two years after the server goes live, it catches up with Mordor. Um, assuming there are no further expansion updates um, in the next two years to the live servers, otherwise there might be a seventh expansion it needs to catch up with as well. Um, but that is purely speculation at the moment anyway. Uh, and I've just ridden past that. There's the shield. So um, it sounds interesting. It's kind of got generally positive reactions from the player base. A lot of players have been asking for some sort of progression slash vanilla server probably since uh, since the game launched really I think in some cases so uh, a lot of the people are kind of happy at that but it's not quite what everyone expected because everyone was hoping for like a true vanilla server so it was literally like the game was back in Shadows of Angmar. The, the exact game it was then, the exact game at Minds of Moria. Um, it's not going to be that, it's basically going to be the game as it is now so with all the new systems that are in place, things like trait trees, um, you know the the, the warden, uh, runekeeper, and Bjorning classes, the high elf race, all these things that weren't around back in those days will be available and playable. Um, you'll just be capped to those uh, level restrictions and uh, end games, basically. Um, so a lot of people are happy about that. Others have expressed the kind of a a bit of apathy, shall we say, because um, they're just like, well, well I'm never going to play on that, or you know, frowning upon the idea that that server is only going to be made accessible to VIP subscribers. So if you're not a VIP subscriber, you don't have access to that server. Um, so some people might not care because they were never going to play on that server anyway. Um, other people, maybe it might persuade them um, to go in and subscribe to join that server, in which case that's more revenue for, for the devs keeps the company afloat, keeps the lights on, keeps the servers running, you know, that's all good in my book. Um, but also tactically, because they're making it the same code base essentially as what is used for live, you can use that one uh, client that you've already got installed, same launcher to launch this new progression server as you do for your current servers. Um, and it also means they only have to maintain one code base as well. Um, whereas if they went back to having a true vanilla server, um, then they're going to have to have the code as it was back then. It could have been full of bugs. Um, players that were around then, or as, as long as there's one player that's around then, they might know some classic exploits that used to exist back in the day. That, you know, you can exploit certain bosses or stuff, and those exploits could still be done. And it would just be a mess, basically. Um, so it's, it kind of makes sense what they've done. Um, I mean, it could be interesting, sort of like playing old school regions but new school ways with you know doing level caps at 50 doing rift raids with everyone and now you've got you know bjornings and stuff and it could be weird and wonderful um 
but uh, I'm not sure whether I might dip my toes in there. Um, I, I may do just for uh, just for a bit of a laugh, see how it goes. Um, but really, at the end of the day, it's no different to if you personally leveled yourself to level 50 and equipped a Stone of the Tortoise. Um, the only difference is that you don't have to buy the Stone of the Tortoise because you're going to be level capped anyway. And everyone else is also going to have that level cap. So um, it just means, you know, if you want to be one of those people that likes level capping yourself at a particular level cap, doing all the instances, you're going to have more people to play with, basically. And I know there's, there's kinships and leveling groups in the game um, that do kind of do this. You know, they freeze themselves at level 50 either, you know, for... for weeks, months, or, or even permanently, um, just to experience the game at certain uh, points in time, basically. So let's hand these in. Uh, what is this? The belongings of a, belongings of a fallen Rohirrim warrior. I see. I will see to it the Grimbold or one of his men receives these. I do not know what brought the warrior up here, though I suspect he was trying to find out where some of the horses stolen from the Rohirrim were taken. So... Now you have seen some small part of Nan Kurinir. Uh, Nagoras, I was imprisoned there, but I've seen quite a bit of it. Um, among the western hills, a great infestation of goblins and wargs has taken root. Across the river to the east, an encampment of orcs. Urukai, this tribe is called. They are strong and do not fear the sun. To the north lies Isengard itself. We must proceed carefully, for there are enemies all around us. So this seems to be predating all the, uh, the, the attack we did with Theodred. Uh, Saruman's remaining sentries will spend more time looking out for themselves than looking for intruders, for a while at least. It seems that one of Saruman's lackeys is making for the pass out of Nankurde, presumably to bring a message to the Dunlendings. I think it would be best for our Rohirrim friends if he did not arrive at his destination. He should be passing by the Pillar of the Hand shortly. Deal with the sentries there before he arrives, and lie in wait. So, hop up. So if you haven't already discovered the Pillar of the Hand, which we have um, for the exploration deed, it's literally just outside here um, by this big pillar here. So we need to kill at least this guy, probably both of them actually, because the other one's just aggroed. Boing. Uh, we kill these two guys, and then shortly after they're dead, we'll have a guy coming down the road who will spawn in. So there we go. Saruman's messenger approaches. Now he spawns in. He'll be running down the road. Um, here he comes. So we need to kill this guy. Um, it better not foul if I go run to him because I can't be asked to wait for him to slowly walk along. But he is an, uh, a dumb-ending emissary. So we're going to murder him. He's obviously got quite a bit of morale. But 1v1, he should pose no threat to us, really. Although he can stun me, but then again, this is stunned, So um, hey-ho. If he's not an Uruk, it's usually the Uruks that do the stunning. No, your struggles shall be in vain. Darkness take you. So uh, he left his quote a bit late there to basically say, I'm going to win, and then he didn't. Um, so hand this back in, and as usual, yeah, we are going to have a quest completion deed, as well as, of course, exploration deeds, and uh, the, the region-wide slayer deeds for Dunland as well. Have you dealt with Saruman's messenger? Good. The less contact between Saruman's forces and those of the Dunlendings over the next few days, the better. Be wary, Pendulous. A short while ago I saw a strange figure moving south towards the pass, but it disappeared before I could determine who or what it might be. Stranger still, it left no trail that I could follow. I do not know what became of it. Um, there are not many who can so easily evade my eye. I fear that this individual may have some sinister purpose in mind. We should redouble our efforts to discover what that is. He disappeared a few hours ago. I tried to pick up his trail. It was well disguised. Say, did you hear something? Die, fool! So he tried to gank. He found his gank because he screamed, die, fool, and uh, just alerted us to his presence moments before Daggerus got shanked in the back. But uh, I think we discovered who was um, sneaking around. Thagoras has survived. Well, Pendulous, you have my gratitude and then some. It has been a while since I have allowed myself to be caught unaware, and I feel more the fool for it. But I am still alive, and that is something at least. 
So what do we got? We have some pauldrons, some standard metal looking ones, uh, some more leathery looking shoulder guards, uh, a silk mantle, or we have an earring. So let's take uh, any one of those. Pendulous, what know you of dwarves in this place? I must say I was taken aback by a fellow who came here unexpectedly. He claimed to know you and said that you should meet him near some caves some distance northwest of here to, uh, how do you, did he say it? Have some fun. I will warn you, there is a den of goblins up that way. So basically he's directing us onto our friend Ondor. Uh, last evening I spotted a number of horses being led past, by goblins I think, though it was a dark night and I could not make out the figures clearly. The horses seemed wild and upset, and there were lower, stockier creatures around them. Wargs, most likely. If I had to venture a guess, I would say it was a party of warg riders back from a raid on the Rohirrim encampments near the ford, returning with stolen horses. I am curious where they were taking the poor beasts, for horses have no love of goblins, and will not permit them to ride. So yes, what are they going to do if they can't use them for steeds? Let's go find out. So we need to head north, so we've got to go uh, pretty much the same location here. So Ondor's outside the cave, and the uh, the horse quest is inside the cave. So we're going to head due north. Um, but yeah, another thing with these legendary servers, and I spotted this pretty quickly. And I know I'm not the only person that's probably uh, worked this out now, because I've seen some other people pondering this. Um, but uh, on the official Lotro Twitter stream at the moment, they're um, basically counting down previous updates. So starting with update 23, they're, they're basically every day they're saying, uh, update 23, it brought us this, and uh, what's your favourite bit about this update? Um, and each day they're going down to the previous update, so update 23, then update 22, etc. Um, and it's basically counting down... And if you, if you work out what that is counting down to, uh, day zero, if you will, would be Tuesday the 13th of November. Which, uh, for those of you that have been playing the game long enough, you know that Tuesday is the, the normal day that updates go live. For the, for the big updates, like not including things like bug fixes and, and hot, hot fixes, patches, that kind of stuff. Uh, the big updates usually go on a Tuesday, so if something goes wrong, there's someone in the office the, the next couple of days to fix it. Um, so it seems the legendary servers will go live on Tuesday, November the 13th, um, providing there's no last minute problems that delays the launch for, for a day or two, because that sometimes happens as well. Um, so meet me by the caves. Well met, friend. Ah, Pendulous. Fancy us meeting in a place like this. But then where else would we find enough goblins to make sport of? Bah! I would be grateful for your assistance. Those blasted goblins can see... I can almost see almost as keenly in the dark as the sharpest dwarf eyes. Best to take them by surprise and dispatch a few of their sentries before we are caught and buried under a mass of the evil things. I would be grateful for your assistance. Where are the goblins? Where there are goblins, there are most certainly wargs, and this place is no exception. Those accursed wargs are everywhere around here. We must fit out their numbers before they smell us out and hunt us down. So we need to defeat wargs, and I think... We are allowed to defeat the ones indoors as well. Or did we have to defeat ones outside and we get a follow-up quest inside? We're about to find out either way. But uh, we're going to step inside the Fang Riders Warren. Where we have three active quests. So as usual, this is going to be a cave. There's going to be a couple of different ways you can sort of work your way around this. There's a couple of loops, a couple of dead ends. Um, but once you've been in here, once you should vaguely understand the layout. It's generally a main corridor. This is the main corridor we're on. This bit to the right here is where all the wargs live. Um, so we're going to step inside here. There will be a follow-up quest in here for definite. Um, but I believe all these guys should count to our quest. We don't have to kill ones outside. So let's just group these up. Fence AOE. Uh, yep, they do count. Fantastic. So they are debuffing the crap out of me with loads of uh, wounds and one little fear as well. So loads of bleeds that are ticking away on me here. Uh, it's nothing too dangerous, but I need to be aware of that and probably not pull too much at once. Okay, so that makes four. This chap will be five. 
Come over here, sir. Uh, it's not in that corner. Uh, I've got the warg pups and uh, the mummy warg over there. Let's just kill these two on their own. Now, I think the uh, small warg should count towards this quest. Let's see if we can tag all the pups. Oh dear, we've, we've, we've angered mummy. Um, that could be a problem because I'm only on half health. Mistakes were made. Oh, I probably didn't need the health pot. It was fine. Um, so I only got two walks credit in that, did I? I definitely didn't get credit for the pups because there was about five pups. So um, that didn't count for us. Um, so let's us... Go, should we go outside or go further? Hmm, let's go further. If it means we have to come back here on the way out, should be okay. Um, hopefully the ones in there will respawn and we can tag them on the way out if we're still short. So, goblins, we need to kill seven more of them. That'll be number two. Okay, so we've got another passage on the left here, which will lead to a side room. And if we go further down, there'll be another side room on the left. And the two side rooms are also connected around the back as well. Um, so if we come down here... And pretty much every room has at least one quest involved with it in some fashion. Um, whether you're able to do it at any particular point in time uh, is debatable depending on what quest you're on. So as you can see in the background here we have a chap called the Cook. Uh, we do not need the Cook right now. Uh, that is Goblins 3 of 8. That'll be number 4. Does that stay actually leave anywhere? I think it just leads to a dead end. Um, so we can go past the Cook and to the right. I believe actually they might be saying on the floor in the background we need to pick up or have the opportunity to pick up for a quest. Uh, we'll see. Come on. Alright, murder him. Now let's see if we can sneak past without having to kill the cook. Otherwise we might have to wait for him to respawn later. There we go. Sinister recipe. That's what I'm thinking of. So, kill the wog. Uh, okay, I'm not allowed to use that yet. I need to wait until I'm later on in the story it seems. So... Okay. Duly noted. We shall proceed further. So you can see on the map, this opens up this area here. There's another big room here. This main corridor basically goes all the way up here, turns right, and then it goes north again. Uh, there's a couple of smaller rooms off the top there. So over in here, this would be the room where we can find out uh, where the horses have been taken. Um, admit... Jesus Christ, he's making plane noises. Meow. You shouldn't know what a plane is, sir. Planes haven't been invented yet. I think the closest we've got at the moment, excluding riding on an eagle or, or a fell beast, is uh, some, some kites that you can uh, run around going meow. Um, so that that is not a horse. So we will continue our exploration. Here we go. We have a butcher's knife on the floor. Can I pick this up yet? Or is that still gated later? That is later as well. Okay. So uh, remember that item there. What have we lagged? You have found the missing horses. What is left of them? Oh no. They're making horse burgers. Who'd have thunk it? Um, yeah, literally the butcher's knife is stuck in the, the throat of a poor horse. Um, <laughs> just left, you know... Just, just, just to make it a bit more obvious that uh, that this is what they're doing with the horses, in case you can't work it out, with uh, an NPC called the Cook running around in the other room. Um, so that quest is advanced. We're ready to take that back to Ondor. So we just need to kill one goblin, which will be this chap here, and he will make number eight. And we need to kill Wargs. So we can probably head back to the entrance room. But we'll go up these stairs to get back onto the main corridor. Um, have the wild riders been counting as wogs? Or are they counting as goblins? Yeah, they count as goblins. Um, so, this is going to take us back to the corridor. Okay, we're going to make a friend here. Well, he's a ranged guy though, so I better fight him quickly in melee rather than running down the corridor and hoping to drag him. There we go, he should bleed to death. Um... Come on, I reckon bleed. There we go. So as we can see, we are filling in the map as we explore further. So yeah, so we, we came down this way, went to the second room, come back around. 
There's a, a little dead end over here with a portal which takes us back outside into the camps. There's, there's basically three exits from this tunnel. One at the south side where Ondor is, one at the middle here, um, which I suppose I might as well show you where that brings you out. So this brings you up halfway uh, up the, the Fang Riders Warren here. And then the other one should bring you up somewhere around here, at the north side of the camp. Um, so there are several ways you can get in here, but it's it's not a huge cave anyway. And it's not like going through the cave means you escape having to run past loads of mobs in the camp or vice versa. You know, you're still going to have to fight things either way. Um, so there's not really any, any real benefit to doing it either way around. Um, so murder this guy, and then we'll go, and it seems all the uh, the wargs have respawned. So we'll wander in here, we need five of them. Um, so we'll just kill this guy just because he's going to be an annoying ranged character. And we'll try and pull five of these at once. So one, two, three, four and five. Okay, all together now. There we go, Shing Shing. So there we go, all quests available to hand in. So we just need to head back outside and Jesus Christ, look at, look at all these debuffs on me. These numbers flying off the top of my head. I should probably remove them. Um, okay, we're gonna remove four. Uh, so we're heading back out the, the south side. And then Ondor will just be on our left. We can hand these to him. He's going to have some follow-up quests. And as a result of our follow-up quest, we should be able to pick up those two items that we saw on the floor that we couldn't interact with earlier. Um, which will also bestow us another quest for each. So uh, hand these in. Cunning eyes. At your service and your families. Ha! There are so many goblins about. No one will miss an odd sentry or two. Good work, Pendulous. There's one more pack of the flea bitten beasts that we will not have to worry about. Good work, Pendulous. Greetings, traveller. So that is where the poor beasts are being taken. A goblin slaughterhouse. Dwarves have little love for full grown horses, but I would not wish that fate on any creature, hooves or no. So we have one quest, top dog. Welcome. You have come at a most fortuitous time. So we're going to probably uh, wait then to take this next episode actually because it's getting on a bit. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Uh, if you guys have got any comments about the Legendary servers, I'd be keen to hear your thoughts. I have done a separate video of that um, on the channel as well. So I'll, I'll try and link that after this video. Um, but I'd be interested to see whether you guys like the idea, don't like the idea. Whether you don't really care because you're just going to carry on playing on your normal server and not really touch that server or... Or whatever you think really so uh, let me know what you think and until next time i will see you guys later <laughs>